Hi, I'm Cheryl Waters. You're listening to Live on KEXP at Home. I'm so excited to have Hannah Joy of Middle Kids joining me today. Hi, Hannah. Hey, Cheryl. Good to see you. It's so great to see you. You look fantastic. And are you at home in Sydney right now? Yep, just on the floor in our studio. <laughs> I love it. Is that? Do you have a studio in your home or are you uh, at, a, at a different place off-site? Yeah, it's in our house, but I mean, it's like a, a studio, but it, it's like a room with all of our gear in it. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing to have uh, your work so close to home? Does it make you, how does it make you feel? I mean, it's, it's nice. I mean, work is boundaryless. We never stop doing anything, which is good, but it haunts us. But maybe that's good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, send our best wishes to Tim and Harry. And in general, how's everything going for you right now? I mean, we're good. I think like we're really lucky in Sydney, you know, things are opening up and there's shows on again. And it's nice to remember Yay. like that music is like so good live. And so that's been like really special. Um, but um, yeah, we feel really um, blessed to be here because yeah, we're like, Things are pretty cool. And you and Tim became new parents early last year. I loved your Instagram post saying middle kids kid being released in January 2020. The first yeah. middle kids kid being yeah. released. And that was a post you made back in September 2019 from Venice Beach. Is that where you were recording the new record? Yeah. So we were over there. I was doing a bunch of writing and then we ended up um, flying back when I was like seven months pregnant to record in um, LA with Lars Starfors, we like did the whole record in like 14 days because we needed to get back before the baby. So it was like the, you know, the pressure was on, but now like even more grateful because that was our last time we could be in LA since COVID. So pretty crazy. Yeah. Great timing there. Well, how have you been navigating parenthood and music and a new album coming out soon and the global pandemic? I know you said things are opening up more there, but it's been quite a year. Yeah. Big year for everyone. I know it's crazy, but I mean, it's been cool because like when Sunny, our baby was meant to be like three months old, we were like going to move to America and be on the road. So he would be like a little road doggy. And, like, he's, like, never left the house, basically. So life has been, like, very different to what we thought. But it's been really special to be able to just kind of hang with him and get to know him in this, like, you know, little little bubble. What a different experience oh, yeah. that would have been. Uh -huh. uh, your debut LP was incredibly well received. It won all kinds of awards and you did an extreme amount of international touring after that. What was it like to return to the studio after all that initial attention and all that kind of, um, you know, busyness and craziness and fun? And Well, you know, it was actually really cool making this next record because our first album we made essentially like on the road because we were touring so much and being an Australian band you know just gotta do laps around the globe to kind of get out there and I think we really wanted to be a lot more thoughtful about making this record and giving it some time in terms of like you know intentionality and how we wanted the music as opposed to being more like just you know I was like writing songs from our first record just in sound check and like which is cool and it was fun to kind of make the record from that kind of energy but I think this one we wanted more space to kind of think about how we wanted to like go deeper and broader with our sound and with our songs and um it was really cool to have the space to kind of find the soul of each song and um kind of get to know the songs and so yeah we're really stoked with this record we really love it it feels like um, a wonderful expression of kind of where we've been at the last couple of years. And um, yeah, it's so nice to be getting it out. I do recall you telling me when you were in studio here at KEXP touring for Lost Friends that your first album had grown on the road amidst all the high energy of touring. And you felt like the sound of the record kind of reflected that high energy in its sound because of all the live shows that you were playing and being on the road. How would you describe the difference between Lost Friends and this new record? 
to date who are the greatest, by the way, is the name of the new record? <laughs> um, I mean, I think that, yeah, like the sound of this record is a lot more dynamic. Like I think we try to create more space musically. So, you know, as a listener, it's not so much like a lot of music coming at you. Um, which is really fun, like high energy, which, you know, we love that, but also like kind of spaces for you to dwell in. And um, so there's a lot more, yeah, dynamic range and instrumentation and just like even softness and, you know, more like breath and um, still moments, which is, it does feel like a bit of a shift for us because, you know, our live show is really also built around like high energy you know, just thrashing about and kicking around the stage. And I think um, it's been, it feels a bit vulnerable, but right, you know, to kind of have more songs that are a bit more raw and, um, you know, even just less drivey drums. I mean, there are definitely moments of that, but um, yeah, there's just like, it's the arc of the album is like quite different, but that was quite, you. I think we really wanted that. You know, I, I think especially because all of us come from such like different backgrounds and we've trained and played in so many different ways. And I think we really wanted to draw on that this record and to kind of um, highlight each of our playing a little bit differently, um, which was like really fun to see how like that expressed itself with each of us as players. That sounds like so much fun, and you're all such talented musicians that have been playing for a long time, since childhood, and it, it must be fun to have the facility to do that. And you went into a studio for this record and worked with a producer. I know you recorded much of Lost Friends at home and in Sydney. What was it like to travel so far from home and team up with a producer for this record? What was that experience like? It was and what, new, what new things did you try and have fun with? Yeah, I mean, it was... It was awesome. Like, I think we were really tentative to do that because we are so used to the home studio and having just like that kind of intimacy and privacy just to kind of tinker away and do our thing with no like time limits or whatever. It's just like you in the room. And I think we felt like, you know, for this record, we wanted, you know, someone else's voice that we trusted. And I think working with Lars Stauffels was like so special, especially he got along with Tim so well. And, you know, Tim has produced so much of our stuff. And um, I think, you know, we, we wanted to make sure before going to the studio, we like knew each song so that when we went in there, we could just kind of like throw anything at it and not lose the spirit of the song. And so we did that. Like, you know, we just like played with all these like random old synths like some I'd never even heard of and like 12 string guitars and six string banjos, just using instruments that we've never really like used before. And it was so exciting to see like the different like colors and textures we could create around the songs. And I think a lot of that has come from being in a studio and in a different place that we don't know and having someone else kind of like help steer the ship a little bit to kind of free us up to kind of get into that zone more and just kind of, play around um so it was awesome and yeah we're like so grateful that we could do that well let's watch some of those songs now the new album from middle kids called today we're the greatest and hannah joy joining me live on kexp at home and here's some songs recorded exclusively for kexp from the new record enjoy Thank you. 
The party's over, I'll be stacking the chest When the world turns on you, I will be there And I will be
just that the timing's off and nothing goes to plan. Life will keep rolling, but I need the magic in the moment. Someday we'll be gone, but today. That's Middle Kids Live on KEXP at Home. Today, We're the Greatest is the name of the new record. Thank you for making those beautiful videos for KEXP. Had the full band and even a little horn section going there. That sounded great. Where did you make that? And all those flowers around. It was a really cool vibe you set. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, we were, it was at this cool studio in Sydney called Oceanic. Um, we were really stoked to do it there because we actually had big dreams of like setting up our studio and trying to replicate KXP by like putting lights everywhere. And then, um, we didn't do that. The dream died. So then we found this like, yeah, cool space just down the road and brought flowers and yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, it looks great. And it sounded fantastic. And you've been playing together for a while. That's not like your first time getting back together so you've had some time to kind of lock into these new songs you've been doing some streaming and now you've been playing out and about um in australia um what's it felt like to be performing again oh man it has been so cool i think like in lockdown i really started kind of like having some you know low-key existential crisis of just being like everything is meaningless like what's the point of music la 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 and then we played some shows in November and it was just like this amazing experience of remembering like how powerful music is and like the beauty of like people coming together and sharing that energy and yeah it was like so encouraging and like helpful I think particularly for our band who like most of our you know, career has been like on the road and like really playing to like not have that. Like it was like easy to forget like what it we were all about. So like I, those shows are like pretty cool and we got some more coming up, which we're really excited for. And I think this record also is we're excited to play because as you said, like having these horns and we've got some strings on other tracks, like really lends itself to more like collaboration with other instruments. So we're excited to like kind of set up the show in that way that kind of incorporates other players. So, yeah, we're having a lot of fun kind of like creating that. What kind of live show are you going to put together? What kind of instruments are you going to bring on the road with you? Well, we are going to get uh, um, some horns and then also some strings to kind of like come in and out. And then we're also just going to get like some just like have like a synth palace up on stage, which is all new stuff for us. Um, and it's cool because we're playing in venues in Australia that are actually like concert halls. So, you know, they're these beautiful rooms with like, you know, they're usually for like orchestras and symphonies and whatnot. Um, but I think that this album will like, it kind of makes a lot of sense in these spaces. 
Oh, you're making me ache to see live music again. I can't wait until you can actually be in this room and you don't have to replicate it in your own studio and to go out and see you at a venue. The title of your new record, Today We're the Greatest, is a pretty powerful statement, but it also hints at a slight uncertainty for the future, I feel like. I'm wondering how the title represents the record and where the band is now. Well, it really came out of, you know, the heart of the song today, We're the Greatest, which is the closing track on the record. Um, we It felt like it really encapsulated kind of so much of what um, we're singing about on the record. And um, a lot of it is like, you know, in the bridge in that song, it says life is gory and boring sometimes. And like, I don't know, a lot of the themes in this record is like just like the – the beauty and the pain of the everyday and also just like the boring, you know, mundane of the everyday, but then the like, you know, the epic nature of life. And we feel like more and more like the greatness is actually when we can be present and hold it all and live in that. And like a life well lived feels like a life that can like hold it all and, you know, be present to it. Um, And so, yeah, even when we have these like little tiny lives, they can be so great just by like um, participating and doing your life in whatever way that looks. So it felt, yeah, it feels like kind of a cool exclamation in amidst um, the uncertainty and messiness of life um, and quite a hopeful one um, that we felt like was a cool way to shape the record. You've said that you were very intentional with the emotions behind the sound of the tracks on the record, and you sort of just described a lot of emotion in what you just said, but there are specific specific themes or feelings you were looking to capture or just sort of the entirety of what you just said? I mean, I think, yeah, that, and then a lot of it is about, like, um, relationships and intimacy and trust, and I think these, like, things that are very, you know, huge in our experience of life and fraught with um you know anxiety and loneliness and all these kinds of things and I think that you know so much of I feel what I write about is just ends up being from that place because I think that is like you know probably one of the most defining things in our day-to-day life um but you know there's I think it is expressed in different ways and um yeah some of it's kind of like angsty but then some of it's kind of like celebratory um but yeah a lot of it is just kind of you know connection and disconnection with ourselves and with other people and with the earth and yeah it's probably really revolves around that the press around this record calls it fearlessly collaborative and you all have been making music together for over five years now, and of course, Tim and Harry have known each other even longer. I imagine your trust in each other has only grown. How has the strength of your relationships allowed you to explore new territories as artists? You talked a little bit about the direction you went and trying new things, but I imagine the trust there really facilitates that. It's so true. And it's like something that you kind of build, you chip away at over time, and then you And then you're kind of like, oh, wow, like we are growing, you know, with each other and in our friendship. And I think that it's the record really like that is kind of like the scaffolding for the music. It's like because then once we get in the studio, we know each other's like, you know, sensibilities and musicality and that we can really help draw that out in each other. And that was like such a fun experience to like have a space where we could like do that for each other and kind of like, you know, really receive what each other has to bring. Um, and so, and which is just really fun because it feels like a lot more free and a lot more open and, um, then yeah, very dynamic in that way. We're going to watch the video for questions and cellophane brain in a minute. And I wanted to ask you about those songs before we share those videos. You've been incredibly honest on the track questions, exploring previous relationships, as you said, through the lens of time and distance. And you also talked about how alcohol played a large part in those times. And I'm wondering if in revisiting these experiences, if you've been able to gain any new sort of insights. I mean... I think it's like more, it's cool when you like write these songs and then it's kind of just a, 
it's a reiteration or a confirmation of what where you're trying to go and what you feel like is important. Um, and I think like, and just like even helps you reflect on your own journey. And I think like, you know, with these songs, I mean, sometimes it even like alerts me to a truth that I didn't even know that was going on inside me. I'm like, oh crap, like I should deal with that or something, you know, but I think, um, yeah, like these songs ha have been a lot more probably part of my story coming out in a more vulnerable way, which has been like, I think cool because I think for so much of the music that has impacted me, like it's people just sharing their story and their perspective and, and letting that resonate out with whoever that's going to resonate with. Um, so I guess, yeah, just putting it out there. Well, you've pulled from multiple personal experiences for lyrics on this record, and you even talked about a childhood memory of making a diorama for the song Cellophane Brain. And I'm wondering if you can kind of walk me through the process of transforming a powerful, powerful memory like that into the basics of a song. I mean, to be honest, especially with Cellophane Brain, like that was a very, like that song just kind of poured out of me one day. And I think that this is where like, you know, your life totally informs your creativity and art. And I think like um, the more, you know, even if I haven't written a song in six months, I know that I am writing songs just by living my life. And I think that like with that song, it was just like, I was just sitting having a play on the guitar and that image came to me. And then I honestly, the verses are just almost like stream of consciousness. I don't even really know. They're just like random images of like stuff. I don't know. But I think like, yeah, that's, I guess the power and mystery of like music and writing in that way, just kind of like, and it doesn't happen all the time like this, obviously, but that song I think was from like, just like a, I don't know, an old memory that just kind of like came into the fore while I was in that creative space. Well, let's watch those videos now. Middle Kids live on KEXP at home. Here are the songs Questions and Cellophane Brain. How am I supposed to trust you when you are lying all the time? How am I supposed to know you when you are drunk all the time? And I got questions that you got answers And I'm not sure if they're fact or fiction And I got questions that you got answers and I'm not sure if they're even worth asking
listening to Middle Kids Live on KEXP at Home. I'm Cheryl Waters talking with Hannah Joy of Middle Kids. Oh, I love the songs on this new record, Today We're the Greatest. And on Cellophane Brain, your gorgeous voice is even more magnificent and amazing. It especially blows me away on that song, as I say. And it makes me think of the video that you posted to Instagram a few months ago asking why you're singing so deeply disturbed your son. That totally made me laugh. Uh, but you've been, um, you've been, you know, playing music. You're classically trained on the piano and you play the guitar. You play tons of instruments and you've been playing since you were a child. When did you recognize your voice as being such a powerful and beautiful instrument? That's a really good question because actually I never really thought of myself as a singer growing up. And but I started writing songs at a very young age and then melodies would come to me while I was like writing the songs on the piano and then I would just sing them to kind of like, you know, fulfill the purpose of having another voice or instrument to go along with the piano and I would just like, you know, write down these little songs and I think then over time the more I like played and then some people would be like, oh, that's really nice and I'd be like, yeah, cool, I don't know. And then I didn't really do anything about it from like a singing point of view for a very long time. Um, and then I think, yeah, it just has been something that has grown as I've just, as I've realized like the um, art form of song is so important to me that it's almost like I've stepped more into that role because I think like I like studied, you know, orchestration in college and like that was always like kind of where I thought I was going and I still love it. But I think that... Um, I've been really like 
enjoying using my voice. And I think cellophane is a cool example. Like when I wrote that chorus melody, I really like was like, I'm going to try and throw my voice around and see what this thing can do more as opposed to just like kind of just singing whatever came out, which is often what I've done in the past. Like I've, I really wanted to just see like what my voice could do as an instrument which is really funny now because like now having to perform these songs, I'm like, oh my gosh, like what have I done? I really have to like work hard for these. <laughs> is that going to be challenging for you when you go on tour playing every night? Does it stretch your voice to an uncomfortable place? It's not uncomfortable, but I, I have to work really hard. Like I can't just kind of like blur it out. And it's actually really funny. There's one song Uh, There's one note on stacking chairs that when I recorded it, I was pregnant and I could sing a lot lower than I can now. So for me to hit that note, I have to really like dig deep. And like, so that's pretty funny. I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but. I know, I just have to keep getting pregnant. (laughs) Oh, well, there you go. (laughs) Well, it must be fun having a little toddler running around right now and playing live shows. I'm so happy you took time to make these videos for us. These recordings are beautiful, and it's been so fun talking with you today, Hannah. You too. So good to see you. I actually got, like, a um, notification that we were with you in Seattle, like, two years ago. I was like, oh, my gosh, so sad. I wish we could be back, but nice to see you like this. So great to see you, and you're absolutely invited back. So when things open up and we can have you back here in Seattle, I hope you'll come and visit us. For sure. You've been listening to Hannah Joy talk about the new Middle Kids album, Today We're the Greatest. We're live on KEXP at home, and we'll be sharing so much more great music with you day in and day out. So subscribe to our YouTube page and get notifications about all the great music coming your way. Thanks so much for joining us, Middle Kids Live on KEXP at home. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.